Now you're at the point in the calculation of your ANOVA where you have to figure out where the significant differences occurred between your groups. Um, as you remember from your reading, when you do an ANOVA, um, you are, and you get your F statistic, if your F statistic um, is shown to be statistically significant at a given critical value for, um, exceeds a certain critical value, um, suggesting that there are significant differences between groups, that does not tell you where the significant differences have occurred. So you do a post hoc test referred to, one of them is referred to as a Tukey's HSD test. Now the reason we're using Tukey's HSD in this example is because it's readily um, calculable by hand. And other post hoc tests are available for determining the differences between groups when an ANOVA is conducted. Um, Usually computer programs are used to calculate those other types of tests. But Tukey's works very well when you have exactly equal group sizes. All right. Now to be able to calculate the, um, to be able to determine which of your groups have differed significantly, you need to get a, what's referred to as the HSD number or the honestly significant difference for your groups. And you calculate it with a Q, statistics, a Q statistic and you take Q times the square root of the mean square within divided by the group size, not the overall sample size. And we'll do that in just a second. Now, where do you get your Q value from? From a table. So for this statistic, we have to use another table. And this is available in your text. Please print it out now if you have not already done so, so you can look at this with me. This table is the critical values table for the studentized range statistic, otherwise referred to as Q. In this table, you'll see that within each row, there are actually two rows of numbers. The top row are values that are to be used when you are using alpha equals 0.05. The bottom row is to be used when you're using alpha equals 0.01. Uh, down the left-hand side are your degrees of freedom within for the test that you've just conducted. And across the top are the number of treatment groups in your ANOVA. Now, in our example, um, we had three treatment groups, so we go over, here's two, three, four, five, we go to column, that's the column of numbers under the number three here, and we go down to 27. You remember that our degrees of freedom within for this example that we're working was 27. Now you have, for 0.05, you have value, values available for uh, degrees of freedom within of 24 and degrees of freedom within of 30. 27 falls between that and so we're going to interpolate a value here. 3.53 would be your value if your degrees of freedom within was 24. 3.49 would be your Q value if your degrees of freedom within was 30. Ours was 27 so we're going to take a Q value of 3.51. We're interpolating a number between 3.53 and 3.49. So the Q value that we'll use for this is 3.51. And so now we're going to take 3.51 Q, our Q, times the square root of uh, the mean square error within, which for this example was 3.37 divided by 10, and of course, square root of 0.337. And if we just use our calculator here, take the square root of that, it's 0.58. So we have 3.51 times 0.58. And that's 2.04. We're going to round that to 2.04, 2.35, right? Good. So our Q, sorry, our HSD value for this example, HSD equals 2.04. And you'll see in just a second how we're going to use that. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Okay. Good. Okay, HSD is 2.04. Now, we're going to use this honestly significant different difference to evaluate the differences between 
uh, group pairs, or yeah, we could say group pairs. So let's start with our first comparison. First, we're going to compare the mean of group one, which we remember was our high dose group, to the mean of group two. And here we're using our vertical bars to indicate absolute difference. Right? So if it happened that these numbers were reversed and you end up with a negative number, it doesn't matter. We're just interested in the absolute difference. So in this example, um, the mean of group 1 is 9.8 minus 7.4, and that value is 2.4. And then we're going to do the mean of group 1 minus the mean of group 3 equals 9.8 minus 7.1, and that's going to give us a value of um, 2.7, I believe. Uh -huh. And then we're going to take the mean of group 2 minus the mean of group 3, notice we're just doing all possible comparisons here, and this is 7.4 minus 7.1, and that of course is absolute value of 0.3. Okay, so now we compare these values to our honestly significant difference value, and we ask which of these exceeds the HSD. The difference between group 1 and group 2 exceeds the HSD. Our HSD is 2.04, this difference is 2.4. So there's a significant difference between group 1 and group 2. The, the difference between group 1 and group 3 between our high dose group and the control group is also significant when we compare it to the HSD of 2.04 because this value is 2.7. When we compare group 2 and group 3, the low dose group to the control group, we find that, there, that the difference of 0.3 is not exceeding the HSD and consequently we say that that is not a significant difference. So now what we've seen by comparing the absolute differences between mean values, and we're going back to the raw mean values, when we compare these to the HSD, we determine where significant differences lie by seeing which of these values, these difference values, exceeds the HSD. Now, in the next step, you're going to have to write up these results, right? In step five, this is the most important part. You have to interpret the results. From a practical point of view, you're going to explain um, what the meaning of these results are. In other words, what is the meaning of the fact that the high dose group differed significantly in their score from the control group and also from the low dose group, but the low dose group did not differ significantly from the control group? Right? What is the practical implication of that?